viewers, welcome to the session on uh, leadership. I am Sunil Sol Solomon Philip, working as an assistant professor of English in the Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. And uh, this session uh, is on leadership under the main heading and the main uh, subject, soft skills and interpersonal communication. Here we go to see uh, what is leadership, what goes into it, why is it important, and the other nuances of it. People say great leaders are great readers, and great readers are great, great leaders. So I begin my presentation with the quotation, great leaders are great readers. Great readers are great leaders. Here we go with the presentation of leadership. Okay, what is leadership is the question. Why is leadership important for students, most important, the people who are preparing for these competitive exams, people who are gearing up to face the job interviews, to, to work in their workplaces. Why is this leadership important? What is leadership is the primary question of our discussion. Well, Leadership is essentially a continuous process of influencing behavior. It influences the behavior of others. It impacts the behavior of uh, the people around, uh, around them, in a team maybe, or among the team members, among the colleagues, among the, you know, uh, the team members. A leader influences the behavior of others, meaning he stands as a role model, an icon, an exemplary, right? He is an exemplary personality there in the team. Okay. It may be considered in context of mutual relations between a leader and his followers. We have seen so many great leaders, you know, in our experiences, beginning from uh, one of the great leaders of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi, to, uh, I mean, all the national leaders, to cricketing personalities, sports personalities. There are so many leaders uh, business magnets, business personalities, business giants in, in, in terms of information technology, in terms of uh, software and other areas such as Bill Gates, you know, uh, people such as them. So it may be considered in context of mutual relations between a leader and his followers. The leader influences the behavior of individuals to achieve the desired goals. He always impacts the behavior of individuals to achieve particular goals, desired goals, okay, specific goals of the organization. Okay, leadership is a dynamic process. It's a relational process involving interactions among leaders, members, and sometimes uh, outside constituencies. Good leaders are made, not born. People say good leaders are born, not made. You know, that, that, that's a, a quotation that is said in different ways. Uh, but good leaders are actually, they are made, they are not born. If you have the desire and willpower, you can become an effective leader. So it all takes the desire, the willpower for one to become an effective leader. It all takes the, uh, you know, the passion of the person to become a great leader, right? And, and these great leaders, they speak fluently, confidently, successfully, authoritatively in a commanding manner. Okay, they can galvanize the support, they can mobilize people, they can persuade them, influence them, impact them. Okay, based on logos, ethos, pathos, logical reasoning, based on their, you know, uh, persuasion, based on uh, values, morals, ethics, they influence people. They influence the team members around them. Leadership development is an important and a recent issue in the field of management practices. So it, it's an important and a recent issue, right? It, it's an important development in the field of management practices. Basically, it involves developing those qualities and attitudes in managers, which help them to look into the future and to bring necessary improvement pertaining to different leadership styles. So a true leader is a visionary. He forecasts, he predicts, he, he always looks into the future of uh, what will be the outcome of his uh, decisions, of his practices, of his, you know, uh, the rules and regulations that 
he follows and he uh, he makes his team members you know implement execute and incorporate he always sees the future of it the outcome of it the end result of it is what a true leader foresees forecasts predicts anticipates right okay so what is the definition of it what is the definition of leadership it is the art of influencing people to attain group objectives willingly it's a skill is an art of impacting people influencing people to attain group objectives willingly right a minister a captain a manager these are all examples of true leaders great leaders right uh, leaders who influenced people a minister maybe the chief minister of his state the the prime minister of his country he uh, you know stands as a role role model based on in terms of his decisions in terms of uh, the practices that he that he observes that he follows right a captain maybe in a cricket team because in india in our country there are two things that are worshiped one is movies and the other one is cricket so on the cricketing field a true captain he is a leader he leads the team from the front by motivating them encouraging them inspiring them in terms of field placement in terms of batting bowling in all these aspects a manager okay a manager is a true leader in his office among the team members who you know uh, inspires his subordinates who empathizes with his subordinates who helps them who understands them who stands as a role model right who explains them the difficult concepts in a, in an easy and understandable manner in a simple and lucid style okay right so leaders in wa all walks of life irrespective of the profession the designation right leaders are in all walks of life they establish contact contacts with equals with their contemporaries they always maintain healthy relationships they always maintain you know healthy public relationships a true leader number 2 he deals with their subordinates meaning people who work under that leader who work under that manager that captain that minister he 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 deals with those subordinates very very successfully and confidently maybe maybe in problem solving decision making then point number 3 he guides a true leader guides mediates in conflicts he is a true guide he guides he leads from the front right he is a wonderful mediator in conflicts because we know very well that in, that in workplaces there are conflicts there are you know problems there are misunderstandings misinterpretations misconceptions so those conflicts have to be amicably resolved have to be uh, amiably resolved so a true leader knows the technique and the tip of mediating those conflicts he also resolves issues by weighing various alternatives so he weighs the possibilities of resolving issues what are the possibilities of resolving an issue right then point number 5 is he allocates scarce resources properly imagine the resources are not sufficiently available the the resources are not abundantly available a true leader is wise enough he is wiser in earmarking in allocating those scarce resources properly appropriately right pertinently relevantly to all the areas okay right okay and uh, uh, point number 6 in our discussion okay in the definition of leadership is he takes risks and initiatives a true leader he always takes risks he doesn't go back in taking risks he always takes risks right he also takes initiatives he he voluntarily comes forward in problem solving and decision making he voluntarily steps forward in helping in lending his helping hand to the person who is who is in problem who is in some sort of you know difficulty all right fine so this is basically the definition of leader a leader influences and he works right for the uh, uh for the attainment of group objectives as a team as a team right let's go to the rest of the slides in our presentation 
the organizational culture, the economic and uh, social setup, the extent of unionization and other factors may demand different types of leaders in different situations. So what is the culture? What is the setup, right? The atmosphere, the environment of the organization um, in terms of uh, the economic and social setup, the extent of unionization and other factors they may demand different types of leaders for different situations. That's the reason it is said that different strokes, different folks. You see, uh, opening batsman, an opening batsman is a different batsman when compared to a middle order batsman. A middle order batsman is different from a tail ending batsman, right? Their way of stroke playing is different. Similarly, in the same fashion, right? I've just brought cricket as an example there. In the same fashion, okay, okay. Uh, different situations, different contexts require different kinds of leaders, different social setups, right? They require different leaders. They need different leaders. A task-oriented leader, for, for instance, may be more successful in situations which are either very favorable or very unfavorable to him, right? Imagine a, a person is a task-oriented leader. This kind of person may be, may be a police inspector in an area. So he's a task-oriented leader. His job is to, uh, you know, prevent the crime, to stop the crime, uh, crime rate in that place. Imagine an IPS officer. So what he does is he has to be, he may be more successful in situations which are either very favorable or very unfavorable to him. Uh, some of the situations are definitely very favorable. Some of the situations are very unfavorable. So a task-oriented leader knows very well how to behave in that particular task, what actions are to be taken, how the problems are to be solved, how to understand it, how to mobilize the support of people, how to galvanize the support of people around him. A task-oriented leader knows it very well. While a relations-oriented leader, he may be more effective, effective in intermediate situations. He may be very, very efficient in intermediate Situations. What I mean by intermediate situations is a relations oriented leader is a person who is an intermediary, a person who mediates the situations, who resolves the crisis amicably by playing the role of an intermediary. So such leader is an, is a relationships, a relations oriented leader. So that's, that's more about leadership and we are going to study more about in more about it in the slides to come. What's the importance of this? Why is that we are discussing a lot about uh, leadership in soft skills and interpersonal communication, especially for maybe engineering students or maybe people who are going to work in the workplace? Why is this important? What is the significance? What is the importance of it? Well, leaders provide task support. Leaders support the followers by assembling the organizational resources and helping them accomplish their tasks in accordance with standards of performance. So they support their followers by assembling the organizational resource. They compile, they collate, they consolidate all the resources, right? Thereby, they support their followers. And they help them accomplish their tasks. Help whom? Help their followers help the team members accomplish their tasks in accordance with standards of performance, in line with standards of performance, on par with standards of performance. I'm giving three synonyms here. So in accordance with, these are all propositional phrases, on, on par with standards of performance, in line with standards of performance. So a leader provides task support to his team members. That's the reason leadership is important in an, in an organization. Second one, psychological support, right? A leader provides the required psychological support to his team members. How? How? Leaders not only help the followers in accomplishing the organizational tasks, but also help them to overcome various problems they confront while performing these tasks. So a true leader helps his team members to overcome the problems that he encounters in performing a task in, in uh, you know, doing a task. They create willingness in people to work with zeal and enthusiasm. 
So they create, you know, the kind of interest in people to work with zeal, curiosity, enthusiasm, eagerness, eagerness. You see, unless one has passion, you know, one cannot do it confidently and successfully, right? One cannot enjoy the work that he's doing. One cannot, you know, uh, enjoy the task that he's accomplishing. So when he enjoys the task that he is accomplishing, that he is performing, that is, that is, you know, trying to complete, though there are problems in between, he will overcome those problems confidently and successfully. A, a true leader, you know, he creates that willingness in people in terms of zeal, in terms of enthusiasm. They make the followers realize that their work is important so that they work with confidence towards task accomplishment. So a true leader always, he makes the followers realize that their work is important. Their task is important and they, they so that they work with confidence towards task accomplishment. So, so when, when the followers, when the team members are explained the importance of his assignment, the importance of completion of his assignment in the given deadline, that gives him the required confidence and that also gives him the required responsibility, the sense of responsibility in accomplishing the task confidently and successfully. Well, the third importance, the third, third point in the importance of leadership is development of individuals. What is this development of individuals? Leaders build willingness. They build enthusiasm and confidence in followers for accomplishment of their individuals, individual and organizational goals. This results in their overall growth and development. So, so leaders build willingness, enthusiasm and confidence, right? for accomplishment of their individual and organizational goals. And that will result in the overall growth and development of individuals. Obviously, obviously when their confidence develops, when their, when their, when the enthusiasm is properly built, you know, among the team members, among the followers, obviously naturally what will happen is that will result in the overall growth and develop, development of the individual in, in particular and organizationally in general. Isn't it? Right. Well, the next important aspect of leadership is it builds the team spirit. It builds the team spirit among the you know, team members, among the employees, among the workers. No individual can work alone. Leaders develop team spirit amongst followers to work collectively and coordinate their activities with organizational activities and goals. Always remember, we should always keep it in mind, bear it in mind that no individual can work alone. It's always the team. No leader can work alone. It's always the team. Leader along with his followers and team members. So leaders develop team spirit among followers to work collectively and coordinate their activities with organizational activities and goals. They always coordinate their their, their personal activities with organizational activities and goals. They always collate, they always consolidate their activities with the organizational activities and goals. A leader works as captain of the team. So when, when they work together collectively, that's the reason there's a wonderful quotation that is said that coming together is beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success. I repeat, Coming together is beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Right? A true leader believes in this quotation. The other aspect of importance or significance of leadership is motivation or inspiration. What is this? Well, leaders motivate the employees to take up jobs that they may otherwise may not be willing to exercise. They inspire the employees to take up jobs that they may otherwise may not be ready to, you know, accept. So that is a true leader. A true leader tells, motivates his employees that, see, you can do this. You should do this. This is the importance of this. So if this is properly explained, if this is properly, you know, if this sort of motivation is done among the team members, among the employees, if that, this sort of inspiration is done among the team members and employees, they will surely come forward to take up the assignments. It all depends on, the way he motivates his team members. A true leader inspires his team members. Great. Fantastic. 
let us see the next slides in this presentation that is leadership. Well, feedback, change, discipline, these are all, you know, uh, the important areas of leadership. Provides feedback. What is providing feedback? Review, remarks. When people work towards well-defined targets, they want constant feedback of their performance, which helps in achieving their goals effectively. Leaders provide them this feedback. When people work towards specific targets, you know, particular targets, they want constant feedback of their performance. Obviously, imagine, imagine uh, for, a, for a new person, working in front of the camera is, is a new experience, right? He always wants the, the feedback, the review, the remarks of his performance in front of the camera, right? Maybe in terms of his dialogues, maybe in terms of his body language, facial expressions, gestures, emotions, all that. So there in that area, a true director, the director of a movie, he provides the feedback to the to a new actor, to a budding artist about his performance in front of the camera, right? That's where a director directs him properly and successfully. So that is the feedback that I'm talking about. That's a review remarks that I'm talking about. So yes, these uh, people who work with specific targets, they need... Uh, uh, they want constant feedback, review remarks for effective and efficient performance. Uh, you know, somebody to cheer up, somebody to motivate and inspire, somebody to tell them the, the problematic areas in their, in their, you know, presentation, in their performance. That will help them in achieving their goals effectively. Leaders provide them this kind of feedback. Right. Okay. The other point, the other aspect is, that will help in introducing change. What is this help in introducing change? What is this? All right. So a true leader provides feedback to his team members and followers. Uh, and this true leader, he helps in achieving their goals effectively. The next point, the, the significant aspect or important point of uh, leadership is a true leader helps in introducing change. People say a change is always welcome. Effective leaders can convince members about the need and benefits of organizational change. A true leader, he can convince his members about the need, about the requirement and benefits of organizational change. Why is that change is necessary? Why is it we need to update all the time? Why is that we need to always, you know, keep in pace with the, you know, changing trends and, and, and with the changing state of the art technology? So that is what a true leader convinces his team members about. He always, you know, convinces his, uh, uh, his uh, subordinates about such kind of change that is required to, uh, you know, update themselves all the time. Right, according to the requirements of the market, according to the standards and demands, needs of the market, of the industry, of the industry. The change process can thus be smoothly carried out. So once this is properly explained to his team members, he always, a true leader, helps his team members to bring that change among themselves, you know, in a gradual manner, in a gradual manner. Okay, fine. The next aspect of our importance of leadership or significance of leadership is a true leader maintains discipline. Well, this reminds me about the four D's that are required for a true leader. And the four D's are, I keep, you know, uh, explaining this in all my presentations. Let me repeat that, you know, for the easy understanding of all of you who are viewing this presentation. The four D's that are required for a true leader are, well, the first one is dedication. The second one is discipline. The third one is determination. And the fourth one is duty 
mindedness. Dedication, discipline, discipline, determination, and duty mindedness. These are the four D's that are required in a true leader, isn't it? He has to be a dedicated person. He has to be a disciplined person. He has to be a determined person. The determination, no matter what, uh, you know, whatever be the circumstances, whatsoever are the circumstances, whatsoever are the, you know, uh, uh, situations, he is very determined to accomplish his tasks, and he inspires his, he motivates his team members in the same fashion to work in the same style. And then the last but not the least, that is duty mindedness, right? People say work is worship. Maybe true. Yes, work is worship. Because when you do your work, obviously you will stand as a role model. You will finish off your tasks properly and successfully. And so that you can, you can, uh, you know, do everything on time rather in time. Okay. So that is one of the important aspects of, you know, discipline. Uh, and one of the important aspects of leadership or significance of leadership in an organization, in a team. Right. Let me take you to the rest of the slides in this presentation. Performing ethical values. What are these ethical values? Well, ethics are morals, values. So, values are very important. Ethics are very, very important. That's the reason. From childhood days, children are taught moral stories. Why? To enable them, to help them know the morals, the values, the ethics of life. The, the, the values that they require in the future days of their life. So a true leader, he affirms ethical values. Leadership derives from trust. A firm trust of people, employees, customers, shareholders, you know, suppliers, regulators, and community in a leader. So all these people, employees, they believe the leader, customers, shareholders, suppliers, regulators, community, all this team, they believe their leader. So when they believe their leader, obviously, naturally, that leader is such a person who should have proper values, morals, and ethics, isn't it? We don't believe every, everyone, every Tom, Dick, and Harry. We believe a person who has certain values, who has certain standards. Okay, thus a leader needs to conform to ethical practices. So a leader, he has to always conform to ethical practices, no, you know, unethical practices in his behavior, in his character in his approach, in his attitude. This is something extremely important and this is the true significance of it, of an effective and efficient leader. <clears throat> right. The next one, the next important aspect of a leadership is empowering others. A true leader, he always empowers others. He enlightens, he enriches others in terms of knowledge, in terms of, you know, experience, in terms of, you know, approach, attitude methodology, you know, techniques, tips, standard of procedure, okay, plan of action, all that, in terms of all this, a true leader empowers others, empowers his team members. A good leader leads by empowering others. It means delegation of power. Today's leader is not expected to retain all power with, with himself. He gives autonomy and power to others. He has to diffuse his power he has to command power and respect for empowering others. So what it means here is he not only, he, he doesn't, you know, keep all the autonomy with himself. Rather, he gives autonomy. The meaning of autonomy, well, the, the our college is an autonomous college. IAR, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, is an autonomous college. The meaning of autonomy is self-governing. Atto is self, okay? So auto autonomy, self-governing powers. So a true leader, he not he he doesn't retain all the power with him. Rather, he decentralizes the power. He makes others also, you know, powerful, you know, by empowering them, right? By giving them certain powers, by giving them certain decision-making, problem-solving, you know, 
you know, uh, permissions, permissions, right? So that is another important aspect of leadership uh, in our discussion. And the next one is he reviews the norms. A true leader reviews the norms of his organization, the rules and regulations that are practiced, okay? The terms and conditions. He keeps reviewing them. The, you know, the conditions, rules and regulations, statutes and ordinances from time to time, periodically, periodically. What is this? Well, that is, from time to time, a leader needs to review his mission and vision statements along with clear norms and guidelines, taking into account views and experiences of his subordinates by interactive ways like organizing workshops and discussions. Well, what is happening in reviewing the norms is he always goes for an, with, for an open discussion with his colleagues, with his uh, subordinates, with his uh, you know, team members to know the impact of whatever decisions that they have taken, to know the drawbacks, the bottlenecks of the, the, the decisions or the problem solving areas and uh, the overcoming solutions troubleshooting solutions, to discuss those troubleshooting solutions, a true leader periodically reviews the norms, the rules and regulations that are practiced in their organization, the terms and conditions, the statutes and ordinances. I'm giving again three synonyms here. Rules and regulations, terms and conditions, statutes and ordinances. He periodically reviews so that, so that any problem is solved then and there on the spot with the support of his team members in that open discussion. Isn't it? Right. Let's go and see the rest of uh, the importance of leadership in this presentation. A true leader, he sets the ethical example. We have already seen the importance of ethics, morals and values for a true leader. So here, how does he set an ethical example? How does a true leader set an ethical example? The ultimate leadership responsibility is modeling the behavior of others. Employees constantly watch and learn from leaders. They rightfully assume that it is okay to do whatever the leader does. Regardless of what is written or said in the organization, leader's behavior is the performance standard which employees generally follow. Well, all that I'm trying to say here is, uh, I usually teach one of uh, an important and interesting bits to uh, my students who are preparing for these competitive examinations because and, and that and the bit is Sachin's character is worthy of emulation by all youths. I repeat that example. Sachin's character is worthy of emulation by all youths. The god of Indian cricket, the little master, the master blaster, Sachin Tendulkar. Well, here the reason for I've taken this example is to introduce you the word Emulation, emulation, the meaning of emulation is or to emulate is, according to Oxford Mini Dictionary, to copy, okay, to imitate, right, or to follow. So these are the meanings of emulation, emulation, irrespective of, regardless of what what the what are the practices of their leader whatsoever are the practices of their leader their team members their teammates always emulate their leader they follow they copy they imitate their leader just like it just like the students following the teacher because the teacher is a leader in his classroom he leads the students from the front so students might not believe their parents at home but they believe their teacher because According to that student, his teacher is correct. So he tells his parents, though his parents tells, no, no, this is not right. He tells, no, my teacher said, and this is correct. Look at the way they believe their leader. They follow their leader. They imitate and copy their leader. That is what I'm trying to say. So the ultimate leadership responsibility is modeling the behavior of others. Employees constantly watch and learn from leaders. They're very constant. They very carefully, meticulously observe their leaders in terms of behavior, decision-making, problem-solving, attitude, approach. So a leader should set a very, very true and ethical example. They rightfully assume that it is okay to do whatever the leader does, regardless of what is written or said in the 
organization leaders behavior is the performance as performance standard which employees generally follow so for them for the teammates for the team members their leaders behavior is the correct you know performance standard though the rules and regulations are different whatever leader does is correct that's the reason it is always said that the boss is always right isn't it the boss is always right okay the next important aspect of our leadership in this discussion is leadership relations because it is said that leadership is a relationship it is the relationship that a leader develops among his team members shareholders stakeholders leaders with strong trusting and authentic relationships with their teams know that investing time in building these bonds makes them more effective overall what is this so a leader with strong trusting and authentic relationships with their teams he knows very well that quality time has to be invested in building the bonds where the leadership can be more effective and efficient that's where organizing you know constant workshops meetings board meetings so on and so forth when employees have high levels of engagement this has a significant measurable and transformational impact on organizational performance so when 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 these people when these team members have high levels of engagement with this leader that has a significant measurable and transformational impact on organizational performance because that's where people trust one another trust each other so that they can work in you know uh where it is said the unity strength united we stand divided we fall so as as unity they come forward and they they build the strength of the organization united they stand right okay research shows that it is the quality of the relationship people feel they have with their immediate leader or manager that is the primary driver of these feelings of engagement all this research and development about leadership shows that it is the quality of the relationship people feel they have with their immediate leader or manager that is a primary driver that is a primary driving force of these feelings of engagement for that proper relationship for that proper bonding with this leader okay these kinds of you know relationships are very very important okay great what what are the other leadership relations are what is more about this leadership relations that we should know that we should you know uh, learn relationships really matter they they really matter a lot they are not an optional take it or leave it factor they are a fundamental enabler of you and your organization's ability to attract keep and get the very best out of your people so you see relationships are they are not just if you if you like you can build if you don't like you can break those relations it is not something of that sort it, they are fundamental enablers they are essential basic enablers of you and your organization's ability to attract employees team members shareholders to keep and get the very best out of you know the people around them effective leaders know that leadership is relationship and leaders and managers with poor or toxic relationships with the teams will see performance suffer imagine a person who doesn't gel well with his teammates he doesn't take them into confidence his team members there are chances of that leader failing in his problem solving and decision making in this in his governing in, in his governing career career what distinguishes a great leader from a good leader is that person's ability to foster deep rooted and trusting connections with the people they work to build to support deep rooted and trusting connections with the people they work that is where a great leader is different from a good leader a great leader always he believes in you know building strengthening supporting deep rooted and trusting connections with the team members with the teammates that he works with the founder of the lash professional treats her fellow artists and customers as lifelong friends this is an example creating the lash sisterhood community it takes effort and intention to find the right team and to build good and trusting relationships according to causes and posner when leadership is based on relationships with people those people will dare to take risks make progress and effect change always remember when 
when there is proper meaningful relationship between the leader and the team members when the relationship between the leader and the team members is strong right trustworthy it is then that the team members will come forward to take risks voluntarily they make progress and they bring changes in the organization all right great so we have seen the definition of leadership so far we have also seen the the you know importance of leadership one by one step by step we are now discussing more about leadership relations in this presentation ways to foster relationships in leadership what are the what are the different ways to develop to strengthen to support relationships in leadership culture of trust always remember that the culture of trust faith reliance that's the reason you know mukesh ambani dhirubhai ambani they went with the name reliance to rely to depend to count on somebody to bank on someone that is the culture of trust right when leaders share their passion and vision openly and clearly throughout the organization and encourage their employees to work towards that vision a sense of purpose is created that can help power the expected business goals and results right so a true leader he shares his passion and vision openly and clearly throughout the organization and he encourages their employees to work towards that vision a sense of purpose is created that can help you know power the expected business goals and results so there is a sense of responsibility there is a sense of accountability and answerability that is you know inculcated among their team members in terms of culture of trust because a true leader believes his team members and he shares his passion and vision openly and clearly throughout the organization he also encourages their employees to work towards that vision right so that is where culture of trust is very very important to build relationships in leadership the next point is effective listening to develop to strengthen relationships in leadership listen with compassion to understand others underlying sentiments concerns and interests so have, go for patient listening go for focused listening have some patience lend them your ear you know don't uh, ignore them don't ignore them listen to them listen to them because unless we listen we cannot solve the problems listen with compassion so compassion here is generosity you know kind heartedness benevolent nature kind hearted nature to understand others underlying sentiments concerns and interests this way a true leader can build a safe environment where everyone on the team can make their voices heard so voicing views give them an opportunity give the team members an opportunity to voice their views so that that means you should become the voice of the voiceless a true leader should become the voice of the voiceless so that he can listen to those problems and come up with troubleshooting options great well what are the other ways to foster relationships and leadership one of the most successful ways to listen is to create a safe space where you can ask questions and receive candid answers so yeah periodically meetings with them you know maybe online conferences which our chief ministers are doing nowadays prime ministers are doing nowadays right so that sort of open listening empathetic listening right that sort of you know compassionate listening will help the team members believe that their leader really is concerned about them about their needs their requirements and their demands well the the other point in uh, you know fostering relationships in leadership is empathy 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 is always stepping into the shoes of the opposite person meaning understanding the position of the opposite person last and arguably the most important is empathy when a leader can put themselves into the perspective of their employees a trusting relationship is developed a trustworthy bond is developed right a trusting uh, relationship a little more vulnerability is helpful because others can see the leader as another human being just like themselves so vulnerability here is you know they should be easily influenced by according to oxford mini dictionary the meaning of vulnerability is if they if they are easily influenced by the behavior of the leader then they will open up they will even share their weaknesses shortcomings they will even share their trespasses shortcomings 
with their leader openly, publicly, so that the leader can always come up with the troubleshooting options. First of all, the team members and the teammates should be given an opportunity to feel that leader is also one among us. He is also just like another human being like us. That sense of trust, that sense of belief, that sense of you know, confidence in their leader will you know, help the team members believe him and come up with flying colors. Right? Leaders are born, they are not made. How do we say that leaders are born? They are not made. Because in the beginning we said leaders are made, they are not born. Look at this controversial statement. For a number of years, researchers in the field of management focused on qualities that will make a person an effective and successful leader. The result was that trace theory, also called great man theory, proceeds on the assumption that leadership qualities are inborn or God given and that the leader is quite different from average persons in terms of his of these qualities. Okay, as Linda Smirich and Gareth Morgan put it, persons emerge as leaders because they can frame and change situations and in so doing, enact a system of shared meaning that provides a basis of organized action. In a way, this theory questions the usefulness of leadership training as it believes that acquisition of leadership qualities is an impossible task. Well, this is a bit of controversial statement that some of the theories such as Linda and Smerich, they say, when we say that leaders are born and they are not made, that means even by training, we cannot make, it, make effective leaders. Well, the research is still going on in that field. Qualities that make a person leader. What are the qualities that make a person leader? The traits approach concentrates on personal traits or characteristics of individuals who can be called leaders. Some of these qualities may be enumerated as height, weight, skin color, though there are exceptions to this, a short person may be more effective leader than a, than a tall one. A lightweight can be more effective leader than a heavy one. And a dark skin you know, can surpass the fair skin in providing leadership. Okay, this is what is actually, you know, these are not proved, mind you, because the facts are totally different from whatever is mentioned here. For instance, for example, India's Lal Bahadur Shastri, K. Kamaraj, Jajjivan Ram, they can be cited as ready examples of this exception because they are not very tall. They are not very, you know, uh, their skin color is not very fair. Okay. And they are not very, very light in weight, but still they have proved themselves as effective leaders, as great leaders and efficient leaders. Okay. Energy, both nervous and physical, how long he can work energetically. Of course, this might be one of the deciding factors. What are his energy levels? You know, his nervous uh, levels, physical stamina, fitness. How long can he work energetically? Mental ability, that will also decide. Being well read and well informed, you know, mentally prepared. That will also make a person a true and a great leader. Personality, a captivating magnetic personality. Maybe, you know, his, uh, his uh, uh, non-verbal communication. But by, by the word personality, I don't mean to say, you know, only the color complexion, the features, the, the, the you know, height of the person or the strength of the person. What I mean to say is his captivating and magnetic personality, right? You know, there are some of the leaders who are such great, who have such great personalities. Okay. Maybe some of the examples that we can take here are <clears throat> MS Dhoni, Mahindra Singh Dhoni, right? He has that captivating personality. His quick moves on the field, his excellent, you know, wicket uh, stumping part of it, batting performance, helicopter shots, you know, that personality is what I'm talking about. Initiative, inventiveness and boldness to implement new plans, right? Uh, his uh, guts, his the way he takes risks in implementing new plans. Remember, if he takes a decision, he has to be answerable. He has to be accountable for the decision, isn't it? So that will make a person a true leader. The third point is imagination, creativity, and original thinking. Genuine, authentic, original thinking of that, of that leader. The fourth one, emotional stability, mental stability in adverse situations. How balanced is he in unfavorable circumstances, unfavorable situations? When the opponents are throwing stones at him, when, the, when there is a lot of mudslinging that is happening, how balanced is he emotionally? That will decide, I know, how 
effective a leader he is. Desire, point number five, desire to accept responsibility, courage to own responsibility. You know, how response, how answerable, how countable is he? Flexibility, ability to adjust and adapt to changing situations. Well, the word flexibility reminds me about the other synonyms of that. Adaptability, I'm writing the synonyms here on the board for the convenience of all of you. Adaptability, right? Adapti, adaptability, compatibility, compatibility, right? Adjustability, also in the synonym. Flexibility, ability to adjust and adapt to changing situations. This is one of the important, you know, qualities that will make a person a true leader. The way he quickly learns, the way he quickly adjusts and adapts himself, that person is a true leader. And, uh, okay, point number seven, honesty, the best policy, truthfulness and openness. Okay, sincerity, how earnest, how authentic he is in his, uh, in his ideas, in his you know, statements, in the, in, the word, in the word that he gives, right? Sincerity. Point number eight, determination. Resolve and willpower. His his strong his steely resolve. He says steely resolve in doing something without fail. Without when he promises something, he has to fulfill it. That person is a true leader. Willpower, persistence. Point number nine. Right, persistence. You know, perseverance. Well, the meaning of perseverance is to continue in spite of failure, criticism, and opposition. No matter how strong the failure. Uh, points are criticism, opposition from the opponents. He still proceeds forward, marches forward with, you know, renewed, recharged, revived, you know, rejuvenated and refreshed energy. Right? Endurance, staying power, stamina. You know, how long can he endure? Integrity, integrity, meaning reliability, uprightness, his righteousness, his truthfulness is integrity. The next point is judgment. How decisive, how conclusive he is. Uh, you know, uh, he is. How conclusive is he? How decisive is he? How careful, uh, you know, is he in, you know, judging people, in analyzing people, in interpreting people, in discerning people, discerning people. Then the next one, you know, discussion, uh, the qualities that make a person a true leader is courage, guts, guts, bravery. Okay. The next point is good looks, both physical and sartorial, you know. His, his physical looks as well, as well as his intellectual abilities. So all these things will make a person a true leader. All these qualities will make a person a true leader. Well, uh, that's all I have for you in this presentation. And uh, so far we have seen the definition of leadership as a relationship. The leadership is, it is the way a person influences or impacts his team. That is leadership. And the leader and the team members, they work together to achieve a common goal. That is leadership. And we have seen the importance of leadership, right? What is the importance of leadership in this competitive environment, competitive atmosphere? We have also seen relationships and leaderships. And we have seen several areas about what qualities make a person leader. Several qualities, whatever we have discussed so far, right? I hope the session has been resourceful meaningful and useful to all our viewers. Thank you for watching this presentation. Keep watching IRA YouTube. I am Sunil Solon Felip. Thank you very much. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.